So it's actually super easy to make mead. You just you just put some honey and water together, and then I threw some raisins and lemons in it, and it it's it's amazing. This has been fermenting for like a week. Look at it go. It's like alcoholic soda. It's like soda for alcoholics. In my last video, I covered simple gardening without actually saying anything. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you what we're doing to put in beds very simply and with the least amount of money spent possible. A few weeks ago, we had a friend till up the entire area that we're turning into our new grocery row of gardens. He came over with a tractor and tilled under the very thick grass that was in that area. And then we have had basically a month without rain since, which is actually good timing because it's killed off a lot of the grass which would normally just regrow. If it had rained right afterwards or rained the next few weeks, we would have just had a whole mess of grass again because tilling doesn't necessarily take it out the first time. So once that area was tilled, I'm looking at it and saying, man, I'd really like to plant some fall gardens in there, which we can do at this time of year. People keep saying, why are you planting at this time of year? What are you planting? What are you planting? Well, this is zone eight, and this is a pretty warm zone eight. So we can, we've still got three months of gardening that we can do right now. So we're putting in fall gardens with a bunch of cool season crops. And so looking at this area and seeing how everything looks right now, I thought we've got to get some organic matter in the soil and we've got to get some fertility there. So the very best we can do with that is to go get dried up cow patties. Cow manure is just about the best thing that you can put in your garden for holding moisture and building the soil up with organic matter and inoculating it with excellent bacteria and fungi and just for providing long-term slow release fertility. However, most cow manure is now corrupted with chemicals from industrial agriculture. So if the cows are getting fed hay from off-site or if the fields are being sprayed where they are eating, there are these nasty long-term persistent herbicides. 10 years ago, I bought a load of manure from a dairy and spread it on my gardens and killed my gardens for the entire season. Killed pecan trees, killed blackberries, I killed all of my nice little garden beds and it was an absolute horrible mess. So 10 years later, I just decided to buy my own cows so I have that regular source of soil fertility as well as lots and lots of milk and cheese and butter and yogurt and kefir and all that excellent stuff. As I've been making cheese from the cow's milk, I've been reserving some of the whey and putting it aside and then Rachel and I have been using it as a fertilizer to water the gardens with and they really seem to love it. There's lactic acid bacteria in there and there's also a decent amount of protein which breaks down into nitrogen. So we're finding that the cows not only are providing fertility through the milk, but the leftover whey from cheese making, which we could just drink, but we make gallons of it. Literally, we're getting four gallons of milk a day right now from our two cows, and so there's a lot, a lot of extra, and it's, it's an awesome luxury, but it makes the plants out in the gardens grow well. So we've been using that to water our transplant bed and some of the stuff that we have out in the gardens. The transplant bed has been working very well for us, and that it was just a place where we threw all of our seeds to start out what we wanted to and start them in a nice little controlled area with really good soil right next to where we can see them and take care of them. It's like a little nursery area where the little baby plants come out and this is also a good idea for plants that you're not sure how old the seeds are. We got some seeds from 2018, 2019 and we sprinkle them on there and if they grow they grow and if they don't no big deal because we didn't try to make a nice neat row of them and have them come out right in the garden. It's a very easy way to make transplants just a four foot by four foot bed 
with some good soil in it and then make little tiny rows and put seeds all over it and then transplant them out with a spoon where we want them to go. I was asked about the raised beds here. Why would you make raised beds in a dry climate? Well, I don't actually have a dry climate. I have a climate that is very dry and then very wet and then very dry and then very wet. We get a lot of rainfall here, but it often happens in large rain events, eight, 12 inches at a time. Massive amounts of water get dumped and everything gets flooded and washes around. Or we have a month or so of just straight dry weather like we have right now. So raised beds are kind of a compromise. Yes, they drain better, so when it's dry, they get a little drier than if I had grown straight in the ground but they're also more resilient if we get a massive amount of rain. And don't let people sell you on complicated raised bed systems. You know, you don't need to put out blocks, you don't need to go by cedar or pressure treated, you don't need aquaponics systems, you don't need to raise beds really tall or buy horse troughs or anything like that. All you gotta do is rough an area up, till an area under, or fork an area up, get the weeds out of it, tarpon area, whatever you want to do to kill the weeds off, and then just make mounded beds. Dig out the uh, pathways and pour them up in the beds. I like beds that are four foot wide. This is eventually going to be the grocery row, orchard, food forest, vegetable garden area. But right now, these are just standard garden beds, four foot wide by about 80 foot long. This takes very, very little to do. This is dead, simple gardening. Then all you gotta do is feed them with something. So since I have nice organic cow manure, that goes in here and I'll put a little lime in here and I'll probably put a little kelp meal in here for micronutrients and we're good to go. This bed that I put in here, was super, super dry. The ground was getting hydrophobic. The water just runs off the sand when it gets this dry. So we forked into it and opened up a lot of pore space and then just soaked it and soaked it and soaked it and even stuck the head of the hose down into it to blow water through and just make it mucky. And then once it's mucky, I have this tree company mulch, like when they were clearing the power lines, that was dumped at my old place and I was able to move some of it over here. And so I have this pile of it and we just pull out of that and then mulch on top. So once the ground's already wet, that keeps the ground cooler and holds that in there. Now mulch can be a problem if you have snails and slugs, it can be an issue. And they will really tear up an annual garden. I don't worry about it in perennial gardens. My perennial gardens generally have mulch on them. I don't always mulch my annual gardens. But in this case, this area was grassy. I have the mulch. There's not a lot of life around here that I think could get in here and shred this stuff. I also have some ducks that will eat the snails and slugs, and I think that's an additional benefit. They are patrolling the edge of the garden all the time, which should cut down the population of mollusks, and they leave the plants alone, so I'm pretty happy with them so far. You don't have to make gardening that complicated. This little bed right here, it's pretty high fertility because it's got the manure in it. If you didn't have manure, you could put alfalfa pellets in it. And you could water with diluted whey. <laughs> There's all kinds of different ways you could feed it. You could get some ashes out of your fireplace and spread them around. That's good stuff. You could make yourself some compost tea. Or you could do Dave's Fetid Swamp Water like I do a lot of times. Just use what you have available. You can even save coffee grounds from church and then spread them all through a bed. I'm doing that too. So all I have here is just a little, you know, four foot wide bit of mounded earth with plants in it. When I traveled over to Indonesia a couple of years ago, I was looking at all of their gardens and they, a lot of them just look like this. They, I mean, they were growing for food for their families and for food for market. And it's simple hand tools, simple methods, and lots of food production. It doesn't have to be this big, complicated, expensive thing. I could plant a little closer here because I have good fertility. I have all that cow manure. If I didn't have all the cow manure, I would plant farther apart. If I didn't have a lot of water, I would plant further apart. Right here, I'm right next to the hose, so I can plant a little closer together and put the cow manure in there. These ought to grow just fine. But don't let yourself get sold by marketers and all kinds of stuff you don't need. Generally, there's an expensive, complicated solution for a problem and you can overlook the really simple things and 
totally miss out. I'd rather keep it down on the minimal side of things and grow with what I have, whatever I have. Because the main goal is to grow food. And you can do that. And it doesn't require buying much of anything. Just a few thoughts. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to check out my book, Grow or Die, The Good Guide to Survival Gardening, to learn more about how to garden no matter what happens. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. I can't even open it. It's so risky. Like I want to drink it, but... But you can't open it. There we go. It's amazing. I mean, you only need like $16 worth of honey <laughs> to make like half a gallon of mead. Chuck in some of your wife's bread yeast, and you can get trapped. You can enjoy yourself responsibly. Oh, that's so good.